Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at The Fifth Wave, which stars Chloe Grace Moretz and was directed by Jay Blakeson, who apparently does not have a first name, it's just a letter. Okay. The Earth has been invaded by aliens, which they call The Others, because apparently the aliens have destroyed all creativity on the planet. And the Others are killing off humanity slowly with various waves of attacks because they want the Earth, for reasons that are never really explained. The first wave is an electromagnetic pulse that takes out all electronics all across the entire planet, and this apparently causes airplanes to suddenly lose all forward momentum and just plummet straight down out of the sky. Don't think it works that way, but okay. The second wave involves throwing a bunch of earthquakes and tsunamis at us, even in places where you wouldn't normally get earthquakes or tsunamis, like Ohio. The third wave is the bird flu. Really, although it's some kind of engineered super bird flu that's especially lethal. And the fourth wave involves the aliens actually taking over human bodies and using them as hosts. And the Earth must be saved by an army of children and the power of love. Yeah. This is your basic YA fiction, and not even the good kind. This definitely ain't The Hunger Games, and Cassie Sullivan, which is Chloe Grace Moretz's character in this movie, damn sure ain't Katniss Everdeen. Katniss at least did stuff in her movies. Or the first two, anyway. Cassie doesn't really do much of anything in the fifth wave. Really, it's just stuff happening to her. The fifth wave is kind of the host meets Ender's Game with a little sprinkling of Red Dawn, and it's pretty stupid. In fact, the more I think about this movie, the less sense it makes. Just the way the aliens, I refuse to call them the others because that name is stupid, but the way they unleash these waves, first they do the EMP and then the earthquakes and the tsunamis, which somehow even exist in Ohio. How? And never explains how they're able to do this, but then, after doing that, they unleash the virus. Why would you unleash a virus after killing off all the transportation? Leave the transportation going while you unleash the virus. That'll help spread it. These aliens are stupid. Also, much like the host, they never explain how the aliens were able to take over human bodies in the first place. And, man, the first time... <laughs> The first time they show an x-ray of a human skull with the alien implanted in their brain, this alien life form is so comically oversized, and there's just absolutely no way it could possibly fit inside a human head without killing it. And it turns out this is not necessarily a mistake, per se, for reasons I don't want to get into right now. When I go into spoilers a little later on, I'll talk about it, but it still looked pretty silly. And after the fourth wave hits, the army, which is led by Colonel Vosh, played by Liev Schreiber, rounds up all of the children in this refugee camp and hauls them away to an army base because, according to the army, the alien presence is easier to detect in children than it is in adults, so since the children can easily be screened for this sort of thing, they can trust them and therefore can use the children to start rebuilding the armed forces in order to take out the aliens. So yeah, kind of like Ender's Game, raising an army of children. And while all that's going on, Cassie, the character that we're supposed to care about for some reason, is searching for her brother who was taken away by the army because apparently she was supposed to be taken with them, but after they got on the bus, the brother's like, wait, 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 I forgot my teddy bear. And of course the proper response in this situation would be, look kid, it's the apocalypse, fuck your teddy bear. But Cassie, being the great big sister that she is, decides to run back to their sleeping quarters and grab the teddy bear. And of course, while she does that, the bus takes off and leaves her there, even as she's chasing after it and the brother is calling, no, no, stop, no, bus driver don't care. Why? And so she has to head to the army base on foot, and while she's doing so, she gets tagged by an alien sniper, but she is rescued by this pretty boy named Evan Walker. And these two start an incredibly poorly written romance with some god-awful dialogue. And 
One funny thing I noticed, I checked this movie's IMDb page, and under the quote section, there is, at least at the time of this recording, only one quote written, and that quote is, Could you guys please shut up? That line was going through my head several times during this movie, let me tell you. Now, to give you a better idea of how stupid this romance is, I have to get into spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers, either stop watching the video now or at least hit the mute button until the spoiler tag goes away. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so. Turns out Pretty Boy is in fact one of the aliens, but he apparently changed sides because he fell in love with Cassie. And by fell in love, I mean he saw a pretty blonde girl and got a boner. Which I can understand, but that's not love. And he tells her that the aliens apparently don't believe love is a real thing. And he says, I didn't think love was real either. But then I saw you. First of all, that's stupid. Second, that's not love. That feeling you get when you first lay eyes on somebody, that's called hormones. That is something completely different. And as long as I'm in spoiler territory, getting back to the x-ray image of the human that's been overtaken by the alien and how comically oversized the alien inside the human head is, there's a reason why it looks so fake. It is fake, because the entire thing is a charade. The army has already been taken over by the aliens, Again, they don't really do a good job of explaining how they did that. And they are training the children to fight who the children think are humans that have been taken over by the aliens, but in fact are the last remaining real humans. So basically, they're raising an army of the most gullible children on the planet because nobody ever questions this. And at the end of the movie, when these two stories finally merge, Cassie arrives at the army base and manages to infiltrate the place because their security is shit. And she meets up with her brother and also one of her friends from high school. And they eventually meet up with Pretty Boy, who apparently snuck into the base and started planting bombs all over the place because he's like a ninja or something in addition to being an alien. And he tells Cassie, I had to choose between being alien or human. And I have made my choice. I chose you. Fuck me, this is bad. And then they start sucking face right then and there while all these explosions are going on around them. And I'm just sitting there thinking, really? You're doing this now? And, and even her friend from high school is staring at the two of them like, dude, really? Time and place. So that's the fifth wave. It's, um... It's not very good, <laughs> but really, if you saw the trailer, you probably guessed that already. Um, the stuff involving the army of children and the aliens, that stuff is at least tolerable, if not all that great, mostly because Liev Schreiber makes for a pretty cool villain. But the stuff with Chloe and Pretty Boy, I don't even remember his name. I'm not going to look it up. I don't care. God, it's horrible. It is better than The Host, which isn't really saying much, admittedly, but, you know, it's not the worst young adult movie I've ever seen. And I will give it a little bit of credit for downplaying the love triangle. It's still kind of there, but they don't put too much focus on it. Maybe they're saving the love triangle stuff for the sequel, assuming there is a sequel, and that's a pretty big assumption because this is not doing well, nor should it. It's not a good movie at all. I really can't recommend it to anyone. Just give the fifth wave a pass. And I think I've said all I need to say, so until next time, take care.